Juan, by the time our audience sees this, you'll have uh, walked us through the, all the latest in the Oracle AI database. But tell us, why does AI need to live inside the database itself? And what will this architecture unlock first and foremost for our customers? It's a good question, Fritz. So we really believe that data and AI need to be architected together to get the best benefit from AI and data. So we're, we're putting AI algorithms deep into the kernel of the Oracle database, and that's gonna make a number of improvements. It's gonna make it much faster. You're gonna get much better answers, and it'll be much simpler to use. So overall, we really believe that by combining the two, by architecting the two together, you get tremendous benefits. Also, Oracle already holds most of the world's mission-critical data. And so it's very easy to, to add the AI algorithms and you don't have to move all your data, change all the database. And of course, we have a very mission critical database. So the AI in the database automatically inherits all the scalability, availability, security, disaster recovery, parallelism, everything that we built for the last 40 years for a mission critical database, which is why our customers really love our product. So Vector search, lake house, and agents, we're covering a lot of ground. So when you think about, you know, people who are focused on outcomes, how does this translate into real value? Yeah, there's a lot of value. So I could, I could go on about this for an hour, but so, just very simply. <laughs> so vectors are the new way to access uh, complex data inside of database, things like documents, mm -hmm. pictures, videos, patterns, things that really databases were never able to really process before. So we bring AI to the database and now you can ask questions of your database. Yeah. You can look at documents, you can look at videos and ask questions, search for, for things. Uh, so that is a huge advance. Uh, so that's, that's number one huge advance. The other huge advance is using LLMs like, you know, ChatGPT, uh, to talk to the data. So up to now, you had to know the language of database. So humans had to learn SQL, which is the language of databases, and speak to the data in that. And it's awkward, we're not very good at it. Uh, now, uh, because of AI, we can speak our own natural language to the database. So you can just ask questions in whatever your language is, English, Japanese, French, anything. Um, and the database will understand the questions using AI and can answer your questions. So it's going to make uh, data much more accessible to everyone in the world. You don't have to go learn this esoteric language and study for years. Now you can just ask whatever you want, just like you do uh, when you're asking for answers mm -hmm. on, on uh, these chatbots. You can ask your database for answers as well. And it's going to search all that enterprise data that you have. It's going to figure out what it is you're looking for, where it is, it's gonna query it automatically. It's gonna combine it with its own knowledge and with any kind of uh, public data, they'll do web search and it'll give you a great answer. So this is, this is revolutionary uh, technologies. We're also using it to, uh, to enhance a lot of our database management, make it much easier, much faster, enhance database development. Uh, people who develop databases, we're automating that whole process with AI. And we're making it, we're using it to build new applications on top of the database uh, and make them such that they can be trusted. So there's, there's a huge amount of work going on in AI for the data. So much value in accessibility and speed, yes. which is incredible. All that, ease of use, everything. Yeah. You know, you talked last year, uh, it, pretty much your entire keynote last year was about GenDev. Yes. Um, and you're, you will have talked about it again during your keynote this year, what has changed in that regard? What progress have we made in the technology and in customer uptake in, in GenDev? Yeah, it's a good question. So what GenDev is, is generative development for enterprise. That's kind of a short name for that. And that means we're trying to bring AI to the enterprise. So enterprise is not just kind of toys. These are mission critical systems. These are systems that run the world. Uh, and so the key thing that we're working on particularly, which is very unique, is we're working on making sure that the AI uh, that you use on enterprise systems that, uh, generates applications that you can trust, that are going to give correct answers, that are going to give rapid answers, they're not going give, to give away private data, release private data, for example, medical records, bank records, nobody wants their private data to be seen by anybody else or to be stolen. So that's our major focus in this generative development is to make sure that AI works for very critical data in the enterprise, very critical, very secure data. 
Uh, and so we're working on a number of different areas there. Uh, number one is privacy. Um, privacy in the enterprise is unbelievably important. You can't give away medical data. You can't give away all sorts of data. If you do, you, you can actually go to jail for that. It's against the law. Not only do you burn up your, your customers, but you go to jail also. So that's not good. So nobody wants that. Uh, but also correctness, uh, evolvability of the data, a number of other attributes have to be guaranteed in the enterprise. You can't have an app that gives incorrect answers to end users, where you ask, hey, what's my bank balance? And it gives you the wrong number. You'll go out and spend money that you don't have uh, or you know anything like that. So, so that is the key. AI is extremely powerful and it's almost too powerful uh, because sometimes it just kind of makes up answers or gets the wrong answers or misunderstands the question. Uh, and that can lead to a lot of very severe consequences for for mission critical systems like you know medical systems, financial systems, telecom systems, retail systems, everything. It would be a bad outcome. Yes, very <laughs> bad. It'd be a very bad day if something like that happens. So, so that's that's a key, very very key focus of ours. You talked just a minute ago about um, the some of the ways that AI being close to your data is really creating all these new opportunities to create new applications. But can you talk for a minute about uh, building AI into the database and the advantage for building AI agents? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so again, if you build AI into the database, you get a number of advantages. One, you can combine uh, traditional business search. So what we've done for years with databases, where you can search for you know your medical record or your financial record or your your telephone you can you can search for all those things combined with this new kind of ai search where you can look at documents and images so by putting them though together it allows us to combine business data search with this new ai search it allows us to combine the llms on top and make it run really fast really efficiently and securely so that's that's kind of like the big focus uh, and that's the big advantages of that area. And of course, it's much simpler as I described earlier, because you can, you can now talk to it in plain, right. plain language. Yeah. So, so yeah, th those, by the way, all that, ev every single one of the things I just said is kind of revolutionary. So this is a huge, huge deal. It's a big change for the entire industry. Mm. Yeah. Well, so let's focus on the customers then for a moment. So when you think about customer stories or customer examples, what's that common thread you see in success stories? Yeah, the success stories, I, I think right now, we're in this massive change. I mean, AI, it came out of nowhere a few years ago, and it's it's amazing that, that what it can do is amazing. And so, you know, when I talk to customers, I tell them, you have to get on this thing. This isn't kind of a revolution you can sit out or sit on the sidelines and watch from the bleachers, you know, eating your popcorn. You got to get in and you got to lead. Uh, because if you don't lead, someone else is going to jump ahead of you. So, so the, you know, what, what a number of people say is, hey, um, AI is not going to take away your job, but somebody using AI is going to take away your job if you're not using AI. So you have to lead in this thing. And that means you have to learn the technology. You have to apply the technology. And one of the great things about AI is it's actually very easy to learn and use. Uh, I mean, we've all used the chatbots. So anybody can use that. You, you don't require a PhD or you don't require a class. You were, you almost have to know nothing to use. <laughs> I mean, you have to know it's how true. to ask a yes. question. Yeah. So, I mean, again, this is, this is revolutionary. There's never been anything as easy to use as this ever. Uh, and by integrating it into the database, we're making it just as easy to use for business data. So that is, it's tremendous. So for customers, uh, they need to get on this revolution. They need to understand the technologies. And what we say, it's, it's easy to learn and easy to use. So we're giving the technology. We're not charging the thing extra for the AI technology in the database so they can adopt it right away. Uh, and they're already running their mission critical systems on, on Oracle. So it's very easy to start using that. You don't have to change everything. Yes. It's, just, it, it's just additive on top and you can just use it. Uh, so yeah, so so for customers, they need to get on this technology, and it's easy. Yeah. So the threat of success is just doing it, just just moving forward and you participating. Have, you yes. Have to get on it. You have to say you can't sit this one out. A absolutely. And you know, on that same note, with customers, is there anything that surprises you with customers? Uh, what surprises me uh, in terms of their use? Yes. Yeah, in terms yeah. of their use, different customers, of course, have different philosophies. So. I, I've been very surprised at some of the use cases that customers are using our technology for. Um, you know, I've been in the kind of business database world for decades. 
And now we put this AI technology in the database and customers are using it for things I never imagined possible, like wow. doing uh, genomic uh, matching of bacteria. Uh, I never thought the Oracle database <laughs> would be used for genomic matching. I mean, it never in my entire mind, it, it, it never occurred to me that somebody would use it. So customers are being very creative. They're doing things like identifying fraud. They're doing things like matching pictures to products in their catalog. So there's a lot of very creative uses. Now, now they're, they're using it for videos, for looking at, at sections of video and archiving sections of video and organizing it. Again, Oracle Data has never been used for that those kind of purposes before. So, so yeah, what surprises me is the new use cases because you know I understand very well the traditional use cases, but there's all these new use cases that customers are coming up with on their own. It's not like we told them, yeah. "Hey, go use this for you know uh, matching bacteria genomic information." We never we never even yeah. told it never even occurred to us. Uh, so yeah, it's it's very interesting. Um, and so we've talked a lot, um, and we're talking a lot here at AI World about the speed, but also the speed of adoption. How quickly can customers see new value from going to 26 AI? Um, immediately. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, this is, this is one of the beautiful things about AI. As I mentioned, it's unbelievably easy to use and we built it in. So you don't have to do a whole lot. Right. You have to do practically nothing to use it. Um, so yeah, it's like, it's why is AI taking off so rapidly, generally, because it's so easy to use. All the infrastructure is there. So to use AI on the web, and the web exists, you just go to the, you know, to the LLM website and you start typing things or saying things. You don't even do that it. anymore. You could do it in your, in your browser. Yeah, you could do it in your browser, you could do it on your phone. Yeah. Uh, and the same thing, because we built AI into the database, um, you. You just upgrade to our database and you can just start using it on day one. Right it's, it's extremely simple. And literally there's never been a new technology like this that's this simple to use. Never in the history of mankind has there been something as easy and as quick to wow. process, which is why it's taking off so quickly. One of the reasons. The other reason, of course, it's incredibly powerful. Yeah, exactly. Well, you know, you have led Oracle through some major database evolutions. How does this moment compare and what makes it so drastically different? Yeah, I, I think, again, AI just, AI just came out of nowhere. Yeah. Um, we're doing things now, like real-time spoken word translation that I never thought I'd see in my lifetime. It's like Star Trek. You have the universal translator. Some I have that in my pocket now. <laughs> right. uh, I never thought I would ever see such a thing. You see self-driving cars. I, I didn't think in my lifetime. I mean, just all of a sudden, boom, they're there. Uh, so there's a lot of new technology. And in the database, I never thought that you'd be able to speak in natural human languages without knowing anything about a database and and actually get answers. You always had to build these applications and this infrastructure around it, and you have to click on this and click on that, and you have to kind of know what you're doing. And if you really want to get sophisticated, you have to learn the language of data, SQL, and things like R. These are brand new languages that you had to learn, which are not easy uh, to learn. It takes time, it takes expertise. So so it's it's a whole new world, unlike anything. Um, I think the next you know five to 10 years are gonna see some of the biggest changes we've ever seen just worldwide and in data, you know, it's going to be gigantic changes. We already see it. We're already doing it. Yeah. Because it does feel like we have been talking about AI for a while and all of a sudden we're in this major push forward. Yes. Yes. It's, it's, it's crazy. <laughs> it is crazy. Yeah. And just to kind of wrap it up, we, we've been asking everybody this, uh, this question we'll be asking it a lot is there are people who are either just getting started or kind of fearful of getting started stepping out of database for a minute, although, I, you know, m many months ago, you told me, you know, that, that we had people who are using AI to debug code and, and things like that. So, you know, how, how do, how do people take the first steps? What advice would you have for them? Um, the advice is simple. Just do it. <laughs> it's not, it's, you know, you don't have to be scared. I, you, we've all used the chat bots pretty much. Yeah. I mean, there's no reason not to use it, right? Yeah. I use it every day. I use it many times a day. Um, you, the other thing, you know, my son told me actually this, which is he gave me, you got to develop the muscle memory. Mm. So instead of doing what, you know, we're all used to doing our normal process. Sure. That's good. And so much of this is better if you go first to AI. Yeah. You know, go AI first. Yeah. And the trouble is we become, you know, accustomed over many years to do it 
in a traditional way. Mm -hmm. uh, so the, the thing to do is you got to get on it. You got to use it as much as possible. And then you develop what he calls the muscle memory. Just, that's where you go first and you know what to do and you learn how to do it. Uh, but like I said, it, the, the beauty of it is it's, it's quite simple. Yeah. Great. That's great. Juan, thank you so much for joining us. All right. My thank pleasure. Thank you. Thank you.